In this video tutorial, we are going to explore two different techniques for simplifying algebraic expressions. But before we do that, we need to get a little bit of an understanding of the different pieces or the different parts of an algebraic expression. The first thing we need to look at is that this whole thing is what is referred to as an algebraic expression. And what makes it an algebraic expression is the fact that we have some variables in there. If there weren't any variables, this would just be a regular numerical expression. Now the first thing I notice when I look at this is that there are one, two, three, four, five different pieces, and I'm going to circle each of them. 2a is one part, that plus b is another part, plus 4 is another part, minus 4b is another part, and five, plus 5a is a fifth part. These individual pieces are what we call terms. They are the individual parts that make up the expression, kind of like how there are individual words that make up a sentence. Notice that each term has a symbol that goes with it. It's positive 5a, negative 4b, positive 4, positive b, and this 2a at the front here, even though there's not a symbol there, we, can, we know or we can imply that it is a positive 2a because when we don't, when we have a positive number, we don't write the symbol. So those are the terms. Now if you look at the terms, you notice that we have three different types of terms. We have terms that have a variable that's an A, a term that has variables that are B, and terms with no variables. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually highlight the term that has no variable. That's this plus four here. And because there's no variable, what that means is the value of that term will always stay the same. And so this is what we refer to as our constant. So a constant is a term with no variable. A term with no variable. Now the other four terms all have variables. But you'll notice that they don't just have variables, they also have numbers in front of them. And those numbers in front of them are pretty important. Those numbers are referred to as coefficients. And so I'm just going to underline each of the coefficients. So the coefficient for 2a is a 2. The coefficient for the negative 4b is the negative 4. And the coefficient for the positive 5a is plus five or positive five. Now the b by itself is a little bit tricky. It doesn't, ha it doesn't appear to have a coefficient, but in actuality it does. There is a little tiny one that's hidden there. So if we don't see a coefficient, we know that it is a one, either positive or negative, depending on the symbol. The final thing we need to be able to identify are what we call like terms. Like terms are the terms that have the same variable. So I'm just going to connect those. We have the two B terms over here. And with a different color, we have the two A terms over here. So what we can see here is that we've got one, two, three, four, five terms. One of the terms is a constant. And we have two A terms and two B terms. So these are the different parts that you need to be uh, familiar with when you are working with algebraic expressions. So now let's go back to this whole uh, combining like terms idea. I'm just going to quickly rewrite the expression. 2a plus b plus 4 minus 4b plus 5a. Now the idea of when we simplify algebraic expressions is we are going to do something called combining like terms. And to do this, in this case, I'm going to use a technique that I refer to as break and shuffle. The first step of break and shuffle is to break your expression into the different terms. So there's the 2a, the positive b, the positive 4, the negative 4b, and the positive 5a. We, this has now been broken. Every single piece of the expression belongs to one of the terms. Now what I'm going to do, just for the sake of, of organization, is I'm going to highlight, once again, the different terms. Uh, there's my positive 4. I'm going to highlight my A terms in pink. 
and I'm going to highlight my B terms in yellow. So this kind of gives me a visual of which things I am now going to put together when I shuffle or rearrange the expression. So what I'm going to do now is, is actually rearrange this uh, expression to put the like terms together. So, uh, so let's start doing that. And, and there's a couple techniques here that I think work well. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in alphabetical order. So I'll put all the A terms t first. So 2A in the front and this whole thing plus 5A in the, is next. Now I'll put my B terms together. Notice that I have a positive B term and a negative B term. I always like to put my positive terms first. So positive B minus 4B. And now I'll put my constant at the end. So this time instead of circling, what I'll do is I'm actually going to put boxes around the like terms. So there's my 2A and my 5A. There's my positive B and my negative 4B. And there is my positive 4. So the next step is to compare what's in each box. And to do this, I am either, I'm just going to add or subtract the coefficients. Remember, the coefficients are the numbers in the front. So here I have 2 plus 5, which is 7a. Here I have plus, remember, there was no, remember if there's no coefficient shown, it's a 1. So 1 minus 4, which is negative 3b and then the plus 4 all by itself. And so my final answer here is 7a minus 3b plus 4. I can't do anything else because a's and b's don't go together. They're not the same variable. Constants do not go with variables because they're not the same value. So this is a completely simplified algebraic expression. The second technique for simplifying algebraic expressions is to use algebra tiles. And to do this, we have to do a couple other things first. First of all, I'm going to circle my terms again, just so I can kind of get in the habit of seeing it in the different pieces here. 9x, positive 2, negative 6x, and negative 7. And what I'm going to do is I am going to pull on some algebra tiles that represent each of those. All right, let's explore what this picture actually means. Um, over here on the right, I, I've kind of set up a, a key or a legend. So let's just quickly explore what all those different things mean. One long yellow bar in this case is going to represent x, one positive x. Remember, there's a little one there. One long red bar is going to represent negative x. Right, so a yellow bar and a red bar are opposites. We're going to use the little squares to represent numbers. A yellow square represents 1 and a red square represents negative 1. So using this as a uh, as a key we can actually kind of look at what we have here. Over here we have our positive 9x represented by 9 long yellow bars. Here we have positive 2 represented by 2 little squares. Here we have negative 6x represented by six long, or six long red rectangles. And here we have negative 7 represented by seven red squares. So just like our work with integers, we have different colors of the same shape cancel one another out. A positive 1 and a negative 1 will effectively cancel each other out. So two of these red squares will cancel out the two yellow squares. And likewise, opposite colors of the rectangles will also cancel each other out. One yellow rectangle cancels out one red rectangle. So I'll just kind of pair those up right now. Cancel, 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 cancel cancel, cancel. And just to show that I'll just kind of cross those out. Cross, cross, and then cancel, cancel. By looking at what's left over we can actually see that we've got three yellow rectangles and five red squares. And so by looking at our key we know that three yellow squares represents positive 3x 
and our five red squares represents negative five. So our, the simplified form of this expression is 3x minus 5. And that is how we can use algebra tiles to simplify algebraic expressions.